target. It just doesn't exist at that carrier in the right? Therefore, I'm not going to bugger up my engine. So I can run the engine. So the whole car is run on wood chips? Yeah. yeah. I started on gasoline, and as yeah. soon as it's warmed up and running, you switch over. I switch it over. And you have to get out to do that, or you just automatically? I do it before I get in. I mean, this is just right now, it's manual. I can set the thing up. I mean, the guy. There's a guy named Wayne Keith in, in Arkansas, and he does he, all his switching mechanism and everything is under the hood. All right, this is a kit made by uh, some people in Berkeley. All right, so you this, bought all this as a kit? I, yeah, it was all pieces. Okay. It's all laser cut and rolled. Okay. Okay. The thing about it is, it works. All right, I built a a. Uh, a gasifier three years ago to plans that the U.S. government puts out. Yeah. All right, and they're defective plans, and I destroyed the engine in my truck in seven minutes. Yeah, they're defective plans. Almost like they didn't want anybody to do it. To copy it. Yeah. All right. These guys, all their stuff is open source. If you Google GEK, which are they? You go right to their website. Well, all right. You can download the CAD program, put it on a thumb, take it to a shop, and cut those pieces and get them rolled. All they ask is, seeing as they've done all the R&D on it, if you're going to do it commercially, give them 10% of the selling price. And they sell these kits for seventeen hundred bucks, and they're complete. They come with with everything. Okay, so so when you burn the wood chips, how does it get to the other other area? Like you're just burning wood chips. How does it get to this area? It just it's burns vacuum. off, and it's and it's the gas that comes off. No, no, there's a vacuum. You put a vacuum in the system. Right now, I use a venturi. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. So I blow compressed air in here. It expands. Okay, it causes a vacuum in the whole system. All right, because it draws this system as tight. So when I've got a vacuum in here, there's a. I've got this closed. All right, and this open, so air is being sucked out of the system, and the only way it can get in is right here. What, 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 what part of it don't you understand? Well, I don't understand. Well, it's just there's a vacuum in the system, yeah. all right, and if there's air coming in here, yeah. then that air goes into the air jets, keeps the fire going, and the smoke from the fire gets drawn through the system, through the system, up through the side, back out, through here, mixes with air, burns right here. And how does that run the car? <laughs> when this thing is burning clean, yeah. all right, when I got a clean flame and that's hot, I turn this off and turn the car. This puts gas into the car. That oh, turns the flare on. Okay, okay. I don't go down the road with this burning. Uh, okay. Now, when it's okay. sitting parked, if I crack this, yeah. And I've got compressed air on this. I can run the car and it at the same time. Okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Uh, because the this is putting the car is taking what gas it wants, and and this thing is is I, I, I can regulate the the uh, amount of gas goes into this one. And so I was doing it by accident the other day. Yeah, so, so is this a, like a setting, you have a setting that just sets it up for that time to, to become a gat to run the uh, automobile? What I do is when I have a blue flame, when I've got a, a hydrogen flame right here, mm -hmm. in daylight you can't see it, you can just feel it and you can hear it. Yeah. All right, and the temperature here is over 700 degrees. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. Okay, then I know it's safe. All right, and I literally, all I do is open this valve and close this one. And, right. and the, the car is running, and it just now the car is sucking its fuel through this pipe. This is actually becomes the carburetor of the car. Oh. This is a manual carburetor. Yeah, yeah I can see that now. Yeah. Okay, and if the gas changes, and it does sometimes because this thing plugs up or whatever, the quality of the gas changes and the car starts to miss a little bit. And I come out and I do two things. I check to make sure the fuel can hang up because when before fuel burns, it expands a little bit and it can stick to the walls in here. That's what this thing is. This is a pipe, I mean a, a bar that goes right down 
to right down to here, mm -hmm. and it's got three little scrapers that stick out on it. One down at the bottom, one here, and one here, but they're set off on, on, on uh, what, 90, no, not 90 degree, 120 degree angles. All right, if I can turn this, it means there's an airspace down there. Because when it's full of chips, it doesn't turn. Okay. All right, and, and so I can tell if it's bridged, because when it bridges up, then all the fuel burns away from the bottom, and there's, there's, there's no fuel. So, if the car starts to act funny, the first thing I do is give this a rattle, and I can automate that. And the second thing I do is dick with the air mixture, and I usually close it down. Because yeah. you know, it'll run on a richer mixture, it won't run on a lean mixture. Yeah. And it drives, when everything's clean, it drives, you couldn't tell, you can't tell the difference. So I guess the, I guess the object of all of this is to uh, make all this stuff in a smaller context. Oh, I can do this really easily. When I'm building one, I've got a pickup truck that I'm going to put one on and I'm building one, going to build one for a friend. Mine will be so square and it'll fit in the back of the pickup behind the driver's seat, you know, I mean behind the, in the back of the pickup, and it'll just come up, and the fuel hopper will be on over the cab. Okay. All right, just a roof rack over the cab, and it'll have, you know, some sort of silage bracing back there. And it will be square. It doesn't have to be round. There's no swirling action. The only swirling action in there is this. With this, with this, this exhaust gas comes in, and it's bent down, through fins, and then there's there's fins that direct it around the fuel, and then over here there's this piece of stainless that comes up from the bottom on the back side of this and forces the gas. Like when the gas comes along, it hits it, and brings it back up, and blows it out here. So that was to cut the back pressure down. The people that do it in California, they run their gas straight in like this and then bend it down and bring it up on the other side. All right, and I thought, eh, what the hell, I won't copy them. Right? I looked at what they were doing and I said, two days, I can build one of them in two days. They charge two grand. <laughs>